Hello there! In this video I'll be covering how to connect a SATA hard drive to a Raspberry Pi. In this particular case I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 2 but it should work just fine on a Raspberry Pi 3 as well. So let's go over the things we'll need to accomplish this. First of all, obviously you'll need a SATA hard drive. In particular, you'll need a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive which only relies on a 5 volt input. You'll find that 3.5 inch hard drives need 12 volt rails along with a 5 volt so you'll be unable to power it directly from the Raspberry Pi. The hard drive model I have right here has a rating of 5 volts at 0.6 amps, which the Pi should be able to power if we make some minor modifications, which I'll discuss later. Next, you'll need a USB to SATA conversion cable. These come in various forms like this one, which I got for surplus at Akihabara, the local electronics district in Tokyo, for less than 3 US dollars. You can also find cables like this one, which has two USB ports where one can work as a supplementary power port. In this video, I'll just use the cheap conversion board, since that's what I've been using in my previous videos in this series. And finally, a USB cable to power up the Raspberry Pi. This may not seem like a very important piece to be mentioned specifically, but as we've seen in the previous videos, which I'll include links to in the description and also bring up as a card up here, it turns out that the power cable is actually a pretty crucial part. From what we found out previously, USB cables that are not rated for carrying high current will not deliver sufficient current to the Raspberry Pi to allow it to use power-hungry devices like hard drives. You can see more details about this in the diagnosing power issues on the Raspberry Pi video that you can check out in the card up here that I'll show. So here I have a power cable that claims to deliver 2 amps. It's a short cable and it costs about 1 US dollar. Also just keep in mind that shorter cables have lower internal resistance so it has a better chance of delivering the current that the Raspberry Pi wants. Also another piece that needs to be mentioned is that you should get a pretty good power supply for the Raspberry Pi. You'll probably need to get one that's at least rated for 2 amps and be sure to get a power supply that's actually decent because power supplies can make a difference in situations where the Pi needs a lot of power. Before we go and start connecting the hard drive to the Raspberry Pi, we'll need to prep it a little bit. By default, the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi can provide up to 600 milliamps. However, from my experience, hard drives appear to want more power when it spins up, so it's necessary to tweak the Pi's configuration file so that it will allow more current to be drawn for the USB port. Adding the line max USB current equals 1 to the boot config text file will allow the Pi to provide up to 1.2 amps combined from the four USB ports. With this configuration made, I found that the hard drive could be powered directly from the USB port of the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that first. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be using an Ethernet cable to connect to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to basically SSH into the Raspberry Pi and demonstrate to you how to get a hard drive connected. So I'll go ahead and power up the Raspberry Pi. Alright, so we're going to log into the Raspberry Pi, so we'll go ahead and add that configuration to the boot config file. First of all, we'll type in sudo nano, or any editor of your choice, to edit the boot slash config dot text file. Once we open it up, we want to go somewhere to the bottom where there's no configurations written, and type in max underscore USB underscore current whoops current equals one. Once we do that, we'll just go ahead and exit out as we save changes. Yes. So once we reboot the Pi, we should be able to connect the hard drive as the port should be able to support 1.2 amps combined current from those four ports. So let's just go ahead and reboot sudo shutdown hyphen r for reboot we'll just do it now all right we're logging into the pi and ready to connect the hard drive so let's go ahead and take our sata hard drive and the usb to sata conversion cable plug that up to the pi first of all we'll connect this like that and then we'll connect the hard drive up to the raspberry pi Okay, good. So we hear the 
hard drive spin up so we're ready for the next phase. Now we'll go over to the terminal and see if we can find the hard drive. So let's type in lsblk and see the block devices which are connected to Pi. lsblk. We see that dev sda, which is the external hard drive, show up. Now type in blkid, which will give us a list of file systems on the block devices which are connected to the system. blkid. Here we find that there's no file system associated with dev sda. By the way, the dev mmc blk 0 p1 and p2 are the partitions that exist in the SD card that's connected to the Pi. Getting back to our hard drive, we'll need to create a partition and file system before we can use it. First, let's use the fs command to create a partition for the hard drive. So, we'll go ahead and do sudo fdisk on dev sda, which is the external hard drive that we just connected. So now we started up disk. If we take a look at the help, the n command will create a new partition on disk. So we'll first of all, look at the help. You can see that n is for adding a new partition. Let's go ahead and do that. So now that it's gonna ask a bunch of options, but if you just press enter, you'll be able to use default values. It'll just make a new partition utilizing the full space of the disk. Let's go ahead and do that. Primary partition number, first sector, last sector. All right. Once that's done, we can use the P command to display the partition table. And now we can see that there's a new partition called SDA1 that's ready to be written. So let's go ahead and type W so we can write the table to the disk and exit. Okay, you just saw the hard disk do something, and it says syncing to disk, and everything should be fine. We're almost ready to use the hard drive. Let's check the lsblk command one more time and see our current partition table status. lsblk. Okay, now we see that dev sda1 is showing up. We'll next create a exd4 file system on that partition. So let's go ahead and type that in. We'll do sudo mkfs make file system for exd4 on dev sda1 partition. And let's go ahead and do that and it's doing a bunch of processing. It can see the hard drive is spinning and it's doing more stuff and more stuff and it's finally done. Okay, now that we have a file system on the hard disk, it should be ready to be used. Let's make a directory so we can mount the hard drive. Let's just create something called hard drive and go ahead and do that using mkdir. mkdir hard drive. And finally, we'll mount the file system on this hard disk to that directory. So let's go ahead and do that. sudo mount dev whoops, sda1 to hard drive. And let's go ahead and do that. ls la and let's take a look at the hard drive directory. And cool, we see a lost and found which tells us that we've hit the root of the ext4 system on the hard drive. Very cool. Now, if we just adjust some permissions and such, we should be able to write to the hard drive and do whatever you'd like to do with it. So now let's just write something to a hard disk. We'll need to use this sudo command so that we can write to the disk because only root is allowed to write to it at the moment. This is what I meant by having to need to adjust the permissions and such before you can use the hard drive as usual. So anyway, first of all, we'll do a sudo touch command which will create a file on hard drive slash hello. Go ahead and do that. And ls again on the hard drive directory or the place where we mounted the hard drive to. And ta-da, we see a file called hello. Very cool. So basically that's the steps you'll need to do in order to connect the external SATA hard drive through USB to a Raspberry Pi. That's about all I have today. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And you'll also see some recommended videos and other videos that I've come out with, so if you're interested in it, please take a look. As always, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.